Mice pie, mice never tasted so delicious. Well, in today's video, we are going to talk about the normal distribution and um, the calculation of their probabilities. So let's firstly consider this example. It says temperatures on May 10th in a certain city has been found to be normally distributed with mean meal is 30 degrees Celsius. And the variance is sigma square equals 9. Now we also know that the record high temperature on that day is 35 degree. And the record low temperature on that day is 26 degree. Now, what is the probability that the high record of 35 degree will be broken next May 10th? What is the probability that the low record of 26 degree will be broken next, tenth, next May 10th? And thirdly, what is the probability that neither the high record of 35 degree nor the low record of 26 degree will be broken next May 10th? Now this is our problem. Can you solve this problem? All right, so in order to solve this problem, we want to firstly introduce some basics about normal distribution. So firstly, let's talk about the definition. The random variable is said to have a normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma if its probability density function or PDF is given as follows. Now this is a very complicated formula. Um, we, repre we will denote this random variable as the follows. x uh, has a normal distribution with mean is mu and sigma square is the variance. All right, here mu is the mean or the expectation. Sigma square is the variance of the normal distribution. And notation is n in the parentheses, first entry is mu, and second entry is the variance sigma square. The graph of this PDF is called the normal curve or bell curve. So it is bell shaped, as you can see from this curve, it's bell shaped, uh, fading at the tails, right? Decreases at tails, and also it is symmetrical about the mean. So in the center, that is the mu. Now, based on this graph, we can see that there are two parameters. One is the mu, the other is the standard deviation sigma. The mean mu controls the location. It is a location parameter. Now, if you can see the figure on the left, uh, this is three, there are three bell curves, they are they share the same standard deviation sigma equals one, but their means, the mu, are different. Right? Negative two, zero, and two. As you can see, with they are of they are of the, exactly the same shape, but their location are different. Right? The green curve is centered at negative two. The right one is centered at 0 0.0 and uh, the blue one is centered at point 0.2. So mu is the location parameter. Now the standard deviation sigma controls the shape. It is a shape parameter. Now we say the larger sigma gives flatter normal curves. As you can see, the figure on the right, they share the same mean. In other words, they are all centered at point zero. 
Now, however, their standard deviations are different. Now, the one, two, and three. And based on this claim, larger sigma gives flatter normal curves. We can see that the flattest curve is the blue one. So the blue curve has a standard deviation of 3. And the green curve has a standard deviation of 2. And finally, the red one has a standard deviation of just a one. All right, so that's some basics about the normal distributions. Now, let's introduce how to calculate the probability regarding to a normal distribution. Now, here is based on what? TI-83 or 84. All right, here I'm just giving you the instructions on finding the probabilities about a normal distribution based on TI-83 or TI-84. Now, your first step is always to find the value of mu and sigma, which is the mean and standard deviation, before you use the calculator. All right, so find the mean and the standard deviation before using the calculator. This is your first step. Now, after you find those values, you can find the probabilities as follows. Uh, to find the probability for x is greater or equal than a, less or equal than b, you can use the following procedures. Now, price second, go to distri, and uh, you choose normal CDF. All right, be careful, normal CDF. All right, and um, there are four entries there. You put the lower limit is A, the upper limit is B, the mean is mu, and the standard deviation is sigma. Now, after you input all those values, you just click Enter. And you are going to, this will give you the probability for x to be in between A and B. Now I want to say that in many cases, um, it, these intervals can be open. Well, this one is closed, right? It's x is in between A and B inclusive. Now, if it is not inclusive, in other words, if x is strictly greater than A or a less, a strictly less than B, well, it doesn't matter because x is a continuous random variable. They are exactly the same. All right, so no matter whether it is a closed um, interval or open interval or half closed, half open, as long as they share the same border, A and B, right? They, uh, they have the same probability because normal distribution is a continuous random variable. All right, so that's how we find the probability for X to be in a finite interval a b now there are always there are also many cases we are interested in to find this probability for x to be less or equal than b now in this case all right um, using the calculator we are following the similar uh, instruction but you know for x less or equal than b we have upper bound we have upper limit, which is B, but we do not have a lower limit. The lower limit is negative infinity. So in a calculator, we do not have a value called negative infinity. So what we can do is just input a really, really large negative number. For instance, here I put negative 10 to the power 99. All right, this is a really, really large negative number. All right, the majority of the cases, it works. All right, so let's just use negative 10 to the power 99 to represent negative infinity. So here is what we do, right? Second district and normal CDF. 
all right be careful normal cds and uh, lower bound we put negative 10 to the power 99 upper bound is b means mu and standard deviation is sigma and then enter all right, that's how we find the probability for x to be less or equal than b now again whether it is less or equal than b or strictly less than b they are exactly the same all right so we are going to use the same procedure to find x probability for x strictly less than b as well all right because it's a continuous distribution whether it's closed or open doesn't matter now in finally we are also in many cases interested in to find the probability for x to be at least a given value that's the probability for x greater or equal than a so in this case we have a lower bound lower limit a but we do not have upper bound upper limit so the upper limit is infinity so what we do is similarly use a really really large number positive number to represent positive infinity so what we do is put in second history and normal c d f all right a is the lower bound the upper bound we put 10 to the power 99 and then the mean is mu and standard deviation is sigma and go enter all right so that's how we found the probability about these three types of probabilities regarding to a normal distribution all right so let's consider an example suppose x is a normal uh, is a normal random variable with parameters mu is 5 and sigma square equals 49 that is we have x is normal 5 49 and using the calculator we want to find these three probabilities now how can we find these three All right before we do we go using the calculator remember we have to find the mean mu and the value for sigma okay so here we do all right so we have mu is 5 and sigma equals square root of the sigma square which is square root of 49 which gives us 7. now to find this probability all right here is greater than 4 and less or equal than 8.5 we use a calculator all right second district normal cdf of 4 is the lower limit 8.5 is the upper limit and the comma 5 is the mean and 7 is the standard deviation and go enter and that will give us this result all right point 2483 now again here is as we can see this x this interval is greater than for strictly greater than 4 and less or equal than 8.5 this is not uh, close is the left open right closed however we can still use the normal uh, using the calculator just input a 4 and 8.5 for the uh, up for the limits all right in other words no matter whether it's closed or open all right so we just use the calculator and input those limits as the lower and upper limits and then use the calculator we can get the result all right so that is our a for b we want to find the probability for x is strictly greater than 4.5 all right again and no matter it's open or closed we just use a calculator all right so <clears throat> for this one we have second go to district go to normal cdf all right so 4.5 is the lower limit there's no upper limit so we use 10 to the power 99 all right for the upper limit and uh, 5 for the mean 7 for the um, uh, standard deviation all right go enter and we should get this one our uh, resulting this probability is 0.5285 all right so this is b and for c to find this probability for x is less or equal than 7.6 we use the calculator all right so second district normal cdf 
All right, so there's no lower limit, so we use negative 10 to the power 99, 7.6, 5, and 7, and go enter, right? So here we got the result is 0.6448. All right, so let's just review what we did, all right? So we just, uh, for this example, we firstly find the mu and the sigma, all right? So this is what we need to do before we use the calculator, all right? And then for A, we simply input the lower bound is, lower limit is four, upper limit is 8.5, just input the calculator, we found the value is 0.2483. Now for B, similarly, it's greater than 4.5, so there's no, there's a lower limit is 4.5, but there is no upper limit. So what we do is, instead, we put a really large number, say 10 to the power 99 as the upper limit. And 5 is the mean, 7 is the standard deviation, and we got this point 52.85. And this is for B. And for C, as to find this probability less or equal than 7.6, and uh, there is no lower limit, so we use the negative 10 to the power 99 as the lower limit. And 7.6 is the upper limit, 5 is the mean, 7 is the standard deviation, and again, we got this probability is 0.6448. Right, that's how we solve the problem uh, to find the probability using a calculator. All right, so now let's solve the problem. All right, so temperatures on May 10th in a certain city have been found to be normally distributed with mean mu equals 30 degrees Celsius and the variance sigma square equals 9. The record high is 35 and the record low is 26. So what is the probability the high record will be broken next May? B, what is the probability that the low record will be broken next May 10th? And C, what is the probability that neither the high nor the low record will be broken next May 10th? So we do firstly remember we first find the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. All right, so solution, we have what? Mu is 30, and the standard deviation is square root of the variance of sigma square equals square root of 9 equals 3. And um, then what is the probability that the high record will be broken next uh, May 10th? So that is to find the probability for x is greater than 35. Or that means what the high record of 35 will be broken. So x probability for x to be greater than 35. Now we use a calculator second history, all right, normal CDF, all right, 35 is the lower boundary, and we use 10 to the power 99 as the upper boundary because there is no upper boundary there, right? So 30 is the mean 3 is the standard deviation. All right, so enter, we got this probability is 0 0.0478. Okay, so that is to say the probability that the high record will be broken next May 10th will be what? Will be 0 0.0478, about 5%, right, about 5%. Now B, what is the probability that low record of 26 degree will be broken next May 10th? All right, so again, that is to say, we are trying to find the probability for X to be less than 26, all right? At less than 26, that means the low record will be broken, right? So we can use the calculator, all right? Um, second history, normal CDF, all right, there is no lower limit, so put a negative 10 to the power 99 and 26 and 30 and 3. All right, so we got this probability is 0 0.0912. So in other words, the lower the low record, all right, will be the probability that a low record of 26 degree will be broken next to May 10th is. 0 0.0912, about 
chance, right? About 9% of chance. So finally, what is the probability that neither the high record nor the low record will be broken next May 10th? So that is to find the probability for x to be greater or equal than 26 and less or equal than 35. We use the calculator. All right, second district normal CDF. All right, the lower limit is 26, upper limit is 35. The mean is 30, and standard deviation is 3. All right, click enter, and you get this probability is 0.861. All right, so um, that is to say the probability that neither the high record nor the low record will be broken next to May 10th is 0 0.861. All right, that's 80, about 86% of the chance that neither the high nor the low will be broken. All right, that's how we solve this problem. Okay, so um, the, using the calculator, right, for different, uh, for these three different types of questions. I hope you find this video helpful. And um, well, before you leave, why don't you try another problem here? Okay, so the problem states, suppose that the eggshell thickness is normally distributed with a mean of 0.383 millimeters and a standard deviation of 0 0.029 millimeters. All right, be careful. Here is the standard deviation is given. All right. A, we want to find the proportion of x with the shell thickness less than 0.36 millimeters. Find the proportion of x with shell thickness within 0 0.05 millimeters of the mean. All right. C, find the proportion of x with the shell thickness more than 0 0.07 millimeters from the mean. All right, can you solve this problem? All right, leave a comment below and uh, I will see you in the next episode.